So a long-running meme on my channel is Sonic Boom. It's pretty dank. You got big gaming YouTubers like PewDiePie or Markiplier. More or less starting their channels in the horror game genre. People love seeing them freak out over games like Amnesia or Slenderman, and what do I have? Talking about a TV show accompanied by a game that made some people say that it's worse than Sonic 06, so... Yeah, now I'm sounding like a bit of an emo kid at this point. My past tortures me. Wake me up inside. The Sonic Boom TV show was not too bad, but man did I ever love to tear that thing apart. The show was so different, and none of the characters, Sonic, Knuckles, Amy, seemed at all like themselves. Sonic was more of a, well, basically just a jerk, that's about it. You guys got totally schooled by Eggman. <laughs> Knuckles was, well, just look at him. Amy just plain out bugged me for some reason, and I'm not easily bugged, so the bugs are strong with this one. Eggman was great. That was pretty much a sum of the whole Sonic Boom TV series for you. So just to put it into perspective, a while ago I made a video that was like a half hour long just talking about how the Sonic Boom TV series could improve, basically pointing out everything wrong with it, and then I go and read the Sonic Boom comics, and it was like they watched my video. The Sonic Boom comics were everything the TV show was supposed to be, and... It was a beautiful dream come true. So of course, I've been meaning to talk in the comics for a long time, and while we're at it, we'll also check out the Sonic Universe comics, because I'm too lazy to make two separate videos. So when I read the comics, obviously I was very excited, and I was even gonna make a video using them as an example of what the Sonic Boom TV show should be doing. Then of course, it turned into a Mega Man crossover. That's a pretty normal thing for comics to do. I guess that's fine, but... Okay, we're a Mega Man crossover now. I guess I was just too confused to make a video at the time, but now I'm... Okay, well, I'm still pretty confused. Let's start a bit shallowly with something that really doesn't make or break a show for most people, but... Well, it can for me, and that is visual presentation. Sonic Boom the Cartoon was like a roller coaster of appearance. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning, look in a mirror, and you're fairly content with what you see, but then ten minutes later, once your eyes wake up, you wish you had something to cover it. It happens. Well, that was... Well, not at all what Sonic Boom was like. But it had its ups and downs. Sometimes the animation was smooth, the lighting was warm, and other times it was robotic and bland. Now, despite all these hills on the road of Season 1, there were also some random segments where you'd be shown a flashback or some sort of drawing, and it's actually done really fashionably well. I always thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if the show actually looked like this rather than the same mediocre 3D animation that every show has nowadays because it's easier and cheaper and faster? I mean, does anyone really need time and money at the end of the day? Anyway, BAM! Comics. Or should, should I say BOOM! Comics. No, I'm sticking with BAM. The comics had just the style that the show kept teasing and was actually really well done. Now, before you get all logical on me and say it really shouldn't matter because it's just looks, actually looks matter quite a bit because a huge thing that the show is pushing is character reactions. All the jokes in this show are basically making fun of the characters and their reactions. Heck, they even redesigned the characters so that they would have more expression beyond Sonic looking kind of mad all the time. Which I really don't mind, but I can see why they changed it for this show. They did this so that they could put more emotion and comedy into the characters' expressions, but the CGI in the cartoon just rarely ever utilizes that. The comics knew what they were doing, and you have a constant feel of expression and emotion. It makes the main form of humor, which is reactions, much more funny and comedic, so don't tell me that looks don't matter, because sometimes they actually do, and I'm a bit of a sucker when it comes to graphics overall, so don't pick on me. After talking about the humor, I guess I should explain why it works in these comics, which is not really an easy thing to explain, so bear with me. <clears throat> it's comics written by Archie. That's, that's really it. Seriously, it's written by the Archie Comics crew, who have not only a massive amount of experience, but it's also a comic, so they have an easier deadline to meet, they don't have to cram everything into a 10 minute episode, they don't have to make the animation easy to convert from French to English, since Sonic Boom the TV show is made in France for some reason, even though Sega is primarily Japanese? Tu n'as pas réussi à vaincre Sonic! The old baguette. They don't have to pay voice actors or use music, and the biggest reason the comics are short and snappy. And Sonic Boom humor is short and snappy as well, so it's kind of fitting. Overall, comics are just easier to make funny, and the Archie Comics crew are very trained professionals. And as a TV show with 52 episodes, I guess it's kind of hard to make really well done. So the comics were good, great even. Hey, they got me to buy them instead of pirating them. Not that I would pirate them, but it was all good, and then it became a Mega Man crossover, and I don't know, I just lost interest. Mega Man is more of a serious series from what I've seen, and 
I just wanted to get more laughs. Maybe it is good or even great and has the same kind of humor somehow, but it's not what I was looking for, so I just kind of stopped there. I will check them out soon, and I'll even make a video on it. Overall, they were good. The characters seemed like themselves, the plots were tame. These are all problems that I've had with a TV show and have said probably a billion times in the past. Overall, if you're a Sonic Boom fan or just a fan of Sonic characters being themselves, go ahead and check this comic out. It's pretty good. Before we move on to the Sonic Universe comics, it's time for a new segment called The Quest for Relevancy, a.k.a. Peter's a Sellout. Put the intro. In this segment, we will take a look inside a magical box known as a loot crate. Oh my gosh, how did this noob Sonic channel get a sponsorship? For this segment, we look inside a magical box and see if there's anything at all relevant to the video that we are currently making. Find out if it is a completely relevant plugin, or maybe Peter just is a big sellout. I don't know. This is actually pretty much completely random, but don't even tell me that it's like rolling a dice, because me and my friends do that a lot. It's a great way to spend a weekend. You ought to get out more often. Roll some dice. <laughs> and due to popular demand, because apparently he's mildly entertaining, special guest Nick is joining us. So this segment here is called, um... No! This segment is called Relevancy or Nah. Oh, well, that's comforting. I open the box and it tells me to die. Yeah, okay. Oh! What? Alright, so this is a Super Mario Bros. 2. It's like a magnet. Hey! Ah, oh, okay, that hurt. Eh. Okay, next. Oh! <laughs> That's why I was going, oh. Oh! <laughs> Clever. This is actually pretty dope, though. I have a bunch of things back there on a shelf I can put around. It's high, I mean, die, die, die. <laughs> Boom. That's actually really cool, though. And, yeah. because I always lack clothing for, uh, because I'm broke. Titanfall 2 shirt. Oh my gosh. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! Relevancy. Oh, okay, dude. look at this. These are fingerless gloves. Sonic the Hedgehog fingerless gloves. Oh. You know who loves fingerless gloves? Me. Nicholas. Put, put one of these on. Oh, yeah, Mr. Krabs. I gotta say, I'm pretty relieved. Um, I was gonna get heck if there was nothing in this box that I'd do with Sonic. All right, this is cool. Right here. <laughs> Just Ganon. <laughs> nice. Just Ganon, sure. Adhesive bandages. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Back then, adhesive bandages. That's good. I know a lot of people tend to cut themselves when opening boxes. That's... Look at that. A bunch of bandages. <laughs> That'll be nice. Why will it be nice? Are you gonna cut me? <laughs> Come on, you should know, Peter. I don't know. Oh, wait, what does your glove say? Game. Oh, mine says over. Oh, over game. <laughs> if you ever wear those socks, you have to wear them with that pin in them. Oh, this is big. Oh, this is big. Oh, boy. Okay, I can't see it. Can you tell me what it is? I actually don't know what this is. Okay. Nobody in the comments tell me. Oh, look at that. Look at that kid. He's very enthusiastic about that. Look. <laughs> this has been another episode of The Hunt for Relevancy. Thank Special thanks to guest star Nick. I never even call him- okay, Nick- his name's Nicholas. He's my brother. I've always called you Nick and never addressed who the heck you are. Thank you, Nicholas, my brother, for coming on. In the description, you will find a link where you can go and you can get the Loot Crate. This is my first time, give me a break. Anyway, by clicking the link in the description and using code PeterK, I made it simple for you. I'm not gonna make anyone try to spell or pronounce my last name. You can get 10% off your very own Loot Crate. Go away. And now we move on to the Sonic Universe comics, which are still pretty awesome, but just in a different way from the Sonic boom. Sonic Universe is like every Sonic fan's dream come true. It mixed everything from the history of Sonic lore. This means you had characters from the games going on adventures with characters from the cartoons, which never mixed before. You had stories from the games explained in depth and with more character development. You had series that dove into the stories that we needed more focus on, and so much more. It was overall a massive mixture of great things that we were never able to see mixed in one package before. Kinda like a loot crate.
Okay, I'll stop. To better explain this, I've made a lot of videos on Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, and hey, here I go mentioning it again, what else is new? The game introduced new characters Blaze and Silver, who, as it would seem in the game, apparently are in charge of defending a doomed world from an undefeatable monster, Iblis, and have been doing so for quite some time. Now I say apparently because it's really more suggested than actually seen. It's insinuated that these two have worked together for a long time and are pretty good friends, and have been in a lot of adventures, but the game Sonic 06 is about the end of that era. About them finally saving the world and everything is happy and new and fantastic, which is kind of a letdown for me. As some of you may recall, in the past I've said Blaze and Silver were my top two favorite Sonic characters. Yeah, oh my gosh, this noob has a favorite Sonic character. Where were you all this video? You forgot to put me on the desk before you started. You could have just made something up, like you went on some kind of goofy slash cringy adventure to cover for me. No. Did I not say you're in my top two favorite characters? No, um... I had to pay taxes and contribute to our economical society. I said goofy, not realistically boring. But again, we don't get much of them doing any of that, and especially don't see their backstory. That's where the Sonic Universe comics thrive. It can dive into the backstory before Sonic 06, before any game, and show us things that were only hinted at before, or even hinted at afterwards. There's a comic series that takes place after the game Sonic Rush Adventure. In that game, a new character Marine is introduced. Blaze and Marine are apparently friends, but from a different dimension, I think? Even though she actually was from Silver's dimension in Sonic 06, I don't even know. But that's what the comics are for. They can combine the canons, continue the adventures of Marine and Blaze, and show the past of Silver and Blaze, just like the games can't. Now that's not only a really good premise, but it's the series' main selling point. So if any of that stuff sounds great to you, you'll definitely enjoy these comics. But what about the things that Sonic Boom did really well, like humor and visuals? Well, that's where Boom had a bit of an advantage. Universe is supposed to be much more serious. I mean, true, compared to Boom, I guess you could say the Super Mario Brothers cartoons are serious. <laughs> But Universe thrives on character development, massive plots, mixing the characters and places into one big story. And while it does have some of the humor and visuals that Boom gave us, it's not always consistent. You have a lot of different artists working on this one since it's a much bigger series. That always comes with a bit of a price. Sometimes the characters look very angular and detailed, and sometimes they look a little bit more like the 90s cartoons. In terms of humor, Universe doesn't try to make you laugh in every panel like Boom does, but it can still be humorous at times, or at least it tries to be. A lot of the time the jokes are a little more childish and can be kinda hit or miss. In the end, Universe thrives on the mixture of everything Sonic, and the characters interacting and actually getting to meet each other, and that's not only what it was supposed to do best, but what it does best. It's really cool to get to see two characters that never got to meet in the games actually interacting and going on adventures. The action is interesting and the stories are understandable, but not too simple. Those are the things that Universe should thrive on, and it definitely does. I've said in the past that Sonic 06 is kind of a depressing topic for me, because in a way it had potential. The story was massive, it had all kinds of different characters, it had different timelines and universes, it hinted at tons of adventures that you never got to see in the game. Overall, it was an epic story, even if it was presented terribly at times. I have the power to travel through time. No way! All that potential and everything that I thought Sonic 06 could have been feels like the Sonic Universe comics. It takes those same stories, gives them more depth, makes the characters more likable, it doesn't have tacky voice acting, which I actually really loved, but still. If you are a fan of the older, more serious style of Sonic games that you had in Sonic 06 or the Sonic Adventure series, then you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. And the Sonic Universe comics is a great way to continue that older style of Sonic 3D games, and it's actually really refreshing. Now, I've had a few of you lovely internet people tell me that the topic of Sonic comics might be a hard one to talk on, but I'm actually not too sure why. I guess it could be that with so many lores and canons mixed together, there was a lot of controversy about whether Archie ruined the Sonic lore by changing the stories and the characters' personalities, but I really don't know. I have very little knowledge about the comics fandom, and I'm not the kind of fan to care much about that sort of thing. For me, they can do whatever they want with the stories. There's so many of them anyway. With different writers, characters and stories are bound to change. It's not like they made Eggman Sonic's dad or something. Now that actually still kind of work in a hilarious kind of way, but overall I enjoyed seeing a massive cast of unique characters interacting in a universe of epic stories and other poetic descriptions that I'm not going to bother saying. If you like anything about the Sonic universe or just want to get more of what the games couldn't give you, definitely check them out.
Coming soon to this channel, stay tuned for What's Up with Sonic Boom Season 2, Episode 1. Yes, the cartoon that really started my channel is finally back. And of course, as is classic, Peter Knetter will be doing a video on it, so stay tuned for that. And of course, if you like this music, it was made by DJ Basevox 28 whose channel you can find in the link in the description. And I definitely suggest you do, he's got tons of music, remixes from different games and original tunes as well. I can almost guarantee it'll be worth your time. As always, thanks a ton for watching this video, and have yourselves a wonderful day.